Welcome back to my channel everyone. I'm Charles from Charles Inn Photography. It's around quarter past 11 in the morning on this very gloomy day. It's been raining now for about two days. Just non-stop rain. And I'm at the mouth of the Pine River here near Brighton. And you might be asking yourself, what are you doing on this sort of rainy day? You really can't sort of take any new photos. Well, I've had this thought in my mind for quite a while of coming down here in inclement weather and photographing this mangrove tree that I really like photographing, normally sunrise or sunset, and I'll pull a photo up here now. This is the type of photo that I like taking at this tree. But I've had this idea in my mind for a while now of coming here when the tide is quite low and photographing this tree in inclement weather. So I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to use my video camera while I'm actually taking the photos because it's really sort of ugly weather and I really don't want to risk damaging any extra gear. I've got my umbrella here which I'm going to use while I'm taking photos of the tree. The idea behind this is to take a photo of the tree with the background blurred out. So I'm going to use the Nikon D500 and the Nikon 18 to 140mm lens most likely at around 140 mils. That's what I'm going to try for because I just want to concentrate on the tree and throw all the background out. Now because it's raining and all that, the background will actually look quite hazy, like a foggy day. And that's my idea for this photo today. So before I take some photos, I'm actually just going to walk on the, the foreshore here just to show the conditions and the area where this tree is located. So this is the area where I'm going to photograph this mango tree. There's the mango tree there. And if I keep panning along, in the background over there, that's what I'm going to get in my image. Should be quite good. So this is my scene in front of me. You can see the mangrove tree there. The other side of the river is way out in the distance. The tide's slowly coming in. This is exactly what I want to photograph today nice and mute when i get home you'll actually see how i edit the image it won't be full of color because i want to keep this feel of overcast drabby day so i'll take a couple more photos and we'll pack up now due to the weather conditions it just started bucketing down rain after i took the photos so i wasn't able to finish doing just a little wrap up video down there so i'm back home now had a shower had some lunch and I've opened up Lightroom, downloaded a few photos and I've selected one photo out of the half a dozen that I photographed today to edit. Now this photo wasn't taken at 140 mils because this was my intention to actually shoot at 140 mils but when I got out there to get to 140 mils it wasn't the distance that stopped me it was that the angle that I wanted meant that I would have been on the rock wall and I had mangrove trees in front of me so that was not possible so this image was shot at 80 millimeters so let's take a look at it now so this is the image we're going to edit today normally I would actually just edit using the highlight shadows whites and blacks when we do this we're editing an image globally but today I've got a specific goal in mind and I'm going to edit my image into three separate sections. The background, which is the sky, the foreground being in front of the mangrove tree here and the river, and my midground, which is the tree. And I'm going to keep these three sections separate using the graduated filter and the radial filter. But in these tools, I'm actually going to use range masks. Now, if you've never used range masks, I've actually just, now if you've never used now, if you haven't used range masks before, I'll actually put a link up here and you can take a look at this video where I show in detail how to use range masks in the graduated filter, the radial filter and the brush tool. They are so handy to use and it means that you can really target down a specific area in your photo without it affecting the rest of your image. So let's start editing. I've chosen my profile has Adobe landscape. Now the white balance here, I'll just come up here and I'll just click daylight. It's just going to warm up the image just that fraction without over and it's just going to add just that fraction amount of warmth. 
There was no sun about, so there's no need to warm the image any more than this. I'm not touching anything here. I come up here to the graduated filter and if I hold the shift key down while I use the graduated filter, it keeps it straight. So this one here is going to be for my background and you can see here where it's actually affecting. Now I'll put the mask overlay on so you can actually see where it's being affected there. But if I was just using the graduated filter like this, can you see that it's affecting my tree? I don't want it affecting the mangrove tree here. So we'll click mask overlay off. We come up here to range mask and click on luminance. Now you see the slide is quite wide here. On the left we have our shadows, on the right we have our highlight. And I want to control the highlight so I hold the alt key down. I'm using a PC now and I slide it to the right. And can you see how I'm getting like black and white? Now remember when you're using range masks, black concealed, white reveals. So anything that's black is not going to be affected, only the white or the off-white areas, like the light grey area. So slide it here, there. Now I'm happy with that. But before I let the, my mouse go, can you see on the corners here, I've actually got a little bit of vignetting. This is because I was using this lens at 80 mils, but at f6.3. If I had used it at f8 or f11, I wouldn't have had so much vignetting but I just wanted to have more separation to my background so I just chose f6.3 and it wasn't a deal breaker for me because when we finish editing the image here I'll actually show you that we're going to crop this image to 16 by 9 and just slightly crop in on either side so it's not going to affect the final outcome of this image. Now I want to reduce my exposure in the sky. Now I'm reducing the exposure here, but did you see on the histogram, the image was correctly exposed. It was very close to the edge. So even though I'm darkening the highlights here, I've got so much detail that I can bring out here. If I had underexposed it to make it look like this, then as soon as I start to try to bring the detail up, I would be bringing up a lot of digital noise. So this is why it's important to watch your histogram and keep it quite close to the right without blowing highlights. Now I'm going to cool the image down slightly. Now I'm just going to warm up the sky here just that little bit. Now I'm going to add some contrast, add some texture, add some clarity, add some dehaze. I'll take it slow on the dehaze. Look at that. Can you see how much detail we're pulling from the sky? Add a bit of sharpness. That's it. Now look at our sky. We can actually see quite a bit more detail. Now I'll reduce the highlights just that little bit. There. Bring my blacks down a bit. There. That looks really good. I'm very happy with that. I'll just see what happens if I increase the contrast a little bit more. No. I'll bring it back here. Now I'm quite happy. We click done. Now I'm going to add another graduated filter just for my foreground now. So this time I click upwards. Bring it back down on the waterline. And you can see if I highlight it, this is where it's being affected. Click range mask, click luminance, bring the range across. So again, black concealed. There, that's it. Now I'll smooth it down a little bit. There, I'm very happy. Now this area here, I'm just going to cool it down a little bit. It's water, so not too much. See if I go too much, that's way too much there. I still want to make it look quite real. Now we'll add a bit of clarity. If it was just all water, I wouldn't be adding any clarity or texture. But there's that sandbank and these little rocks here. So I just want a little bit more detail in these rocks and the sandbank here. So, and a slight amount of dehaze there. And let's see if I reduce the exposure a bit. That's it. That looks really good. Click done. Now I'll come up to the radial filter. I'll select mask overlay so you can see where I'm actually drawing this. Got to cover the whole tree there. Now you can see I'm actually covering the foreground here a little bit, but we'll get to that later. Unclick mask overlay. Again, come up here to the luminance. Now this time here, can you see here the feather? Now normally when you use a radial filter, you always give it some feather because that just tapers your editing into the image. But here, because we're going to really pull apart the mangrove tree from the background, we don't want a feather and I'll show you this right now. So watch what happens. 
Can you see the glow around the outside of the filter area? I don't want this. So I'm going to reduce the feather to zero. Look, can you see there's a very sharp line and that's exactly what I want. Now bring the smoothness down a little bit. And look at this. Can you see the house just below the tree there? This house is at Dolly's Rocks around half a kilometre away, at least half a kilometre. But you can also see this part of the mangrove here for the background is going to be affected. But this is not a big deal because when I finish the editing on this mangrove tree, I'm going to use the brush tool in the eraser mode and just get rid of all the editing that I've done to the background so it won't be affected. I'll just double check to see if I'm actually happy with this. There, I'm quite happy with that. Now, I'll give it a little bit more warmth. Bring the exposure up a little bit, not too much. There, can you see where we're actually editing? All this is going to be gone in a minute. We'll give some, the tree a bit of contrast, bit of texture, bit of clarity. There, now I come up to the brush tool here, click erase. And I have auto mask, and auto mask means that as long as I keep within the line here, it's not going to affect anything else. Look at that, see? I'm getting rid of all the extra editing that I don't want. Now I've also done a video on how to use the graduated filter, the radial filter, and the brush tool. Now can you see that the ground here, just below the mangrove tree, has been affected? And I want this, I want this whole area to stay, to stand out. I'll come back up here to the radial filter, click on it and go back to the brush tool and now instead of erasing it's just going to paint and I'm just going to paint the foreground here because if I had erased all this extra foreground the Brighton tree wouldn't have actually looked quite good. It would have looked out of place with the dark ground. Now I'm just going to reduce the exposure across the whole image here so globally this looks much better but my tree now is a bit dark so we come back to the radial filter and we'll increase the exposure a little bit there perfect now can you see why I was talking about that I really had this image in mind that I wanted to get an image of a very gloomy day but to highlight this mango tree yes it's a bit artistic but this is what I wanted from this image and there's no harm going out photographing specifically for your end goal. This is what I wanted. So I'm pretty happy with this image. And before I crop, we'll go into the before and after. So look, this is our raw file on the left. And this is our edited image on the right. Look how good it looks. I am so pleased because this is what I had in mind. So now we come back up here to single image. Now I will actually crop this image to 16 by 9 bring it in a little bit. I counted that I was going to have to do this. But I want these little two rocks to be in the foreground here. I want the tree to be basically in the apex of rules of thirds. There. Perfect. Click done. Look at that. This is so cool. Now we've got a very good feel of this image. The tree in the foreground, the background looks very grungy. Just a typical rainy day. But the tree being highlighted so a bit artistic something out of the normal for me and this is quite good to actually try sometimes like we just get stuck in a rut photographing the same sort of photos it's good to actually push yourself beyond your boundaries even though I've been taking photos for so long sometimes it's actually good to sort of feel uncomfortable when you go out saying like this is what I've got in mind am I going to achieve that you just have to have a bit of positive thinking and say yes I know what I have in mind, I'm going to take the photo and when I go home I'm actually going to edit to the desire that I've got in my head and this is exactly what I had in mind. Now if you found value in this video tutorial give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.